My name is Linda. I'm divorced. And for the last six months I've been looking for a man. Hmm. Hmm. But I'm not on that internet, call me old-fashioned. So I actually joined a dating agency. Do you know what? I've had nothing but bad luck with our dating agency. It's cost me a fortune too. What with the travelling to the meets and dates. And the number of men who have no money on them at all is surprising. It's one of the first things I ask them now. Love it to meet you, Dean, or Wayne, or whoever. Can I borrow some money for the cab fare, please? The driver's waiting. If the answer's no, I simply get back in the cab. Meet up with the girls instead. We call those sorts of men. Pockless plebs. <sighs> oh, and that darn agency has sent me on dates with some totally unsuitable men. Nothing like my list of likes. More like my list of dislikes. I mean, I love a guy to look manly. But I did say, strictly no bodybuilders. Do you know what? I turned up for two dates that made me feel I was in the gorilla enclosure of Whipsnade Zoo. You know the sort. Hugely wide-shouldered, no necks, and so muscle-bound they can hardly move. Now how can a man like that take you dancing, I ask you? Oh, and the thought of lying under something the weight of a Volkswagen Beetle does not push my passion buttons at all. Squash them like. I said as much when I turned up and met up with the girls instead. We call those sorts of men looters. Well, they look as if they're carrying a TV under each arm, don't they? <laughs> oh, there was one guy that I managed to speak to beforehand a few times on the telephone. And you know what? I fell in love with his voice. It was like something off the M&S advert. All liquid chocolate and gold. Hmm. Anyway, I turned up at this rather swish bar where we arranged to meet and looked around the room. He wasn't difficult to spot. He was wearing a pink carnation. Stuffed through the zip of his hoodie. Where I put my carnation in somebody's vodka martini and got out quick. I mean, it wasn't just the hoodie, although that was disappointed enough. It was his face. Words were gummit without his pulling head on. Mm. I just caught a cab and met up with the girls instead. We called all sorts of men unattractive. Oh, oh mind, there have been a couple that's gone beyond the first few dates. I am thinking of Mike the Money. No, he was gorgeous. Just like an M&S advert. Tall, dark, handsome, eyes like jewels, voice like silk, and all that money. He had a fabulous car. One of those Austin Martins. Oh, and you should have seen his waterfront property. Oh, fabulous. Anyway, when we finally sank into his circular bed for a moment of passion, he went from M&S to S and M, whipping out a black silk scarf from the bedside cabinet and asking if I'd mind being strangled. Mind, I said? Mind? Have I been depressed recently? I don't think so, you weirdo, because the only length I want put about my person is something that won't potentially kill me. I shot out of bed, ran into the lounge, looked for some change in his trouser pocket, grabbed a cab and met up with the girls instead. Phew! I tell you, we got a name for them too, the Boston Stranglers. Oh, if only that agency had done some psychological tests on its members, it would have saved me from a nasty shock. Anyway, as you can see, I'm not giving up. I'm getting ready to go on another blind date this evening. I'm sort of hoping to meet, maybe an archaeologist, because then the older I get, the more interested in me he becomes. I'll tell you what, I need you to wish me luck. Ciao for now.